What's up guys? Join Grim One, aka Chicago Joey here. Welcome to a new episode of my Poker Life podcast series. This week's guest is Todd Anderson. Todd is responsible for helping to create a new poker television show that just aired last night on CBS Sports Network called Poker Night in America. We spent the first 40 minutes discussing the show how it was brought to life, um, you know, kind of the direction of the show, what you guys can expect to see during the first season, and past the 40 minute mark, we talk about the Heartland Poker Tour, which was um, a, a poker tour in America that Todd helped create, maybe, I think it was about 10 years ago, and he tells some pretty awesome stories from the initial starting point for that and yeah I mean past the 40 minute mark there's some great stories so you know I hope you guys really enjoy this episode and be sure to give any feedback comment subscribe all that kind of fun stuff so let's get into the audio and I hope you guys enjoy Todd Anderson thank you for joining me on a poker live podcast with me uh, I'm super excited for you to be on here you're welcome my pleasure. So, for those people that don't know you out there, and I think a lot of my audience is, is not going to be super familiar with you, as, you know, as, even up to a couple of days ago, I wasn't super familiar with you, but I, you know, one of my friends, Robbie Straczynski, he writes for, uh, he, he has a website where he writes articles, and he wrote up this, this amazing piece about a new project of yours, which is called Poker Night in America, and... I'm going to I'm going to post the the link in the description on my YouTube video for this for the the article that he wrote but I mean once I read this article about the show coming up you know I got I got super excited so I mean you know how are you feeling over there that you know the the show is going to premiere Sunday night you know you know what are you thinking right now how's your mindset going into this Mostly it's relief I mean it's uh it's been a long process to get to this point mm -hmm. and you know it's just not easy I mean to get something like this off the ground. So um, at this stage of the game, it's mostly, you know, I'm excited, of course, because, uh, you know, we have our chance to, to have our show on national television. Uh, and I'm, I'm relieved because it's it's been a long process and a lot of people have committed a lot of time and money to this, and, and we're finally here. And uh, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's get it going. So I know as I was looking up some stuff on YouTube, I, I remember one of the first, the first teaser clips they showed was, I think that was released at the in September of 2013. Is that correct? And now the, the and now we're going live with the June 29th here at a Sunday night on CBS Sports. What what you saw uh, on YouTube was actually some footage that we got in our first the very first um, event that we did, and and that's when we filmed a bunch of these shows, and that was back in in August of last year where what happened was we flew a bunch of players out to uh, Turning Stone Casino, and we basically had them there for four days, and we shot a bunch of footage and played a cash game. And a lot we, we ended up posting some of that on YouTube. One of one of the hands that is the most memorable is, is the one where Sean Deeb uh, ends up flopping quads against Mike the Mouth Mattis Island. It's kind of slow rolls them. Anyway, it, it, kinda, it was kind of a, a sensation on YouTube that we... I think it went up to like 150,000 views. So it's pretty, you know, widespread. And people have seen that. A lot of people don't know why they saw it or where they saw it or how they saw it, but they, but they saw it. They don't really make the connection, which is fine. But uh, anyway, so we've been shooting these episodes for, oh, the last 10 months or so, and now we're, we're finally ready to, uh, to get it out on television. So we have 26 episodes locked and loaded, and we're going to be on starting tomorrow night which is the 29th of June, and then we'll be on every single Sunday night for the, you know, for the foreseeable future. We've got a deal with CBS Sports where we're going to carry the show through the end of the year, and then we have an option to renew uh, at, the, at the end of the year, which I think we'll probably do. So I think the show is going to be on for a while now. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's the beginning, but I think, uh, I think we're in good shape. Robbie sort of, sort of liked it, and the article he wrote was, crazy you know it was almost as if he was on our payroll or something it was i saw you tweet that you said you, you you quoted the article and you said now robbie's not on the payroll i mean i i've, I've talked to robbie uh, a lot in the past uh, couple months just because i think he definitely you know he's coming from it 
from approaching, I guess, the poker industry and poker media from a different perspective as I am, because I, I'm primarily a poker player, and I think he he, he approached it from a you know poker writer standpoint, but he's still very interested in the future of poker, you know, the success of poker, poker entertainment in general, and you know, I, I'm imagining when he saw you know kind of what you put together this this new project, you know, I mean, obviously he got extremely excited about it and like i when i first messaged you i mean i used the word excited like uh, probably like five or six times because i really didn't know how to explain it you know i was at the gym and i was listening to a, a podcast where the guy i was listening to mentioned you know where you, sh you should look for inspiration from people you know, creating new ideas in in the area that you're trying to think of creating new ideas and when i listened to you on the two plus two poker cast you said you said something that is something that i've i feel like i've said word for word numerous times which was the inspiration for me doing starting doing like a plo podcast and you know some other ideas i have as far as content goes you said that the reason you wanted to create this show is that you felt that things and televised poker were pretty stale. You know, there was really no new ideas, nothing, you know, being done. And, you know, you decided to, you know, kind of put this plan in motion. And obviously, as you said, it took a lot of time. But, you know, I guess, you know, so was that kind of your thinking going into, you know, can you expand on that a bit more? Sure. Um, well, first of all, I should probably tell you that that this is my second television show. So, in you know, definitely going to get to the Heartland, Heartland Poker Tour, which... I've okay. been a fan of as well a bit later. Okay, so anyway, I came from, you know, in 2005, I started the, the Heartland Poker Tour. And then when the, when that got sold uh, a couple years ago, you know, I was pretty much at the stage where I couldn't even watch poker on TV anymore. It was just it was just the same thing. I mean, even the show that we were producing, I just couldn't stand it. I couldn't watch it. And, um you know, it's you know, I tour, I go around the country, and I talk to people all the time, and at casinos, and people in the business, and people that run poker rooms, and and it was pretty much the same thing from everybody. Everybody was telling me the same thing. Like, I just don't watch poker anymore. So, I was at my, my own for, for my personal reasons. I was like, you know what? There's got to be a better way to do this. There's got this. This used to be fun and interesting, and now it's just kind of the same stuff. So I had this concept, which is which was kind of a poker variety show or poker like a reality show, and more about you know the people, about the, the characters. So you know, honestly, it, it's kind of evolved from that. I mean, everything changes once you start going down a path. It's never a straight path. You end up you end up having to meander around it. But anyway, so two years ago, um, I was kind of out on the curb after Heartland sold. I, I didn't want to work for the new company. So I was kind of like wondering what to do, and I had this concept called Poker Night in America. And I shopped it around a little bit, and then these, these guys from Chicago, the Rush Street Gaming uh, Company, I met, they flew me to Chicago, I met with them, I really liked them. And basically, long story short, we struck a deal, and they made an investment in a new business to be called Rush Street Productions. And basically, we're off and running. So I hired a couple, couple production producers, production people. We bought some equipment. And we, we started down this path, and then about a year ago, less than a year ago, we did our first TV taping, and that went well, and, and uh, we've done three since then. And then it was shopping it around. I was trying to get it on TV, and we created a pilot. And, we you know, it, it's, it was hard. I mean, really, really hard. I mean, the, the tele TV networks are not looking for poker. Because of because why? Because it's hard to find advertisers, because, you know, the the – what's on TV today is pretty much what was on TV 10 years ago. And <clears throat> nobody's really taken a chance on anything new. So it was very difficult. Um, and I wasn't really picky about what network we got. I actually really, what I really wanted to do is, I think I mentioned this the other night with the two plus two guys. They, you know, I, they asked me what network I wanted to be on. And I always said, it doesn't matter. I want to be on the network that likes us. The, the one that loves us the most is the, is the words I used. So if you get on a network and they like you and they want to promote you and they give you a good time slot and they give you a long commitment, that's what I wanted. And that's what we ended up getting. So CBS Sports, um, they really liked the show from the beginning. And they gave us a great time slot on Sunday nights, which is the busiest night for TV watchers. 
and they gave us a, a you know prime time, which is like wow, it's you know pretty much as good as it gets. So we have our chance to be on TV, and now it's all about you know finding an audience and is it, is, is the show good? And I, I do believe that it is. I, I really like it. It's uh, it's way different than anything you've ever seen. Um, and you'll just have to be the judge. I think people on Monday will be talking about it in some way, shape, or form. I'm sure we'll get critics because you can't not have critics. Oh, for but, sure. Um, you know, two plus two. They 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 love to nitpick every every single possible thing. Yeah, I'm not actually much of a user of that because I you know I just tend to be more positive about things. You know, every, anybody can be a critic, anybody, and that's easy. But try to create something. That's that's where it gets difficult. And um, so I, I like to I like to be on that side of the fence. Mm-hmm. I guess I, I've you know I I started my poker career at the at the very small micro stakes maybe eight years ago, and I started on two plus two. So I've kind of you know, risen up the ranks there in a way to, to kind of come this, you know, personality in the, uh, in the PLO world on there in the high stakes PLO world. And I, I guess I might be one of the only people who has a thread in NVG about my podcast where it's pretty much overwhelmingly only positive things. So I think the only way they're, they're, they're they say only positive things about you is if you're, is if you post in the community daily for eight years or 10 years or something like that. So it's just, you know, a lot of those guys, it's just, you know, I don't know. It's, it's obviously, it's always hard for to get a lot of people to like you. And obviously, everyone's not always going to like you or like your content. So, you know, but I also think, you know, having, getting that feedback, whether it's even, even negative, it, you know, it, is it something that you take into account and you think about, like, you know, maybe they're right, even though they're coming from a, you know, kind of a, a negative outlook on things? Does that make sense? Um, I, you know, I don't mind criticism. I don't mind, I don't mind feedback. And I, I have a thick skin. I can handle. If somebody doesn't like the show, it's not going to bother me. As a matter of fact, I've shared the show with, oh, upwards of say thirty people, and for the most part, by and large, it's been very positive. But I did have one very negative um, reaction to it, and I won't tell you who it was, but it's somebody that you would know. And they were extremely negative about it, like hated it, like wow. said they couldn't watch it. And it turns out, I mean, there's just there just wasn't enough poker in the show. <laughs> and that's the uh, that's the that's the ironic thing about this is I'm trying to create a poker show, but it's more than a poker show. It's 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 kind of like poker is kind of the the backdrop for what I think is mostly about personalities. And fun. I'm trying to create something fun. I want the show more than anything. I want it to be fun, and I and I don't want it to be like super, you know, poker centric in terms of like the vernacular. The, the the you know when I watch poker today, like I was just watching, uh, I was watching uh, Alpha Eight, mm-hmm. and I mean I'm sorry, it's just you lose. You when you talk about when you talk about three betting or four, you know four betting from the cutoff with 20 big blinds, I mean, you have just eliminated virtually all mainstream viewers. You, you have to be a hardcore poker, you know, person to really understand what that show is about. Mm-hmm. So I, I forbid it. Like, I will not let our announcers say anything like that because, why, you know, I want, I want you know, I want mainstream America to be able to watch it and enjoy it. I don't want to, I don't want to talk over their heads. And so that's a big part of our show. So, you know what? It turned off this one guy. It turned him off. He just, he didn't, he didn't like it because it just, it, it wasn't that technical poker centric show that he's accustomed to. Well, you say so much and I, there's just so much I want to, I want to talk more about and expand on. So I think you mentioned a great thing. I, I laughed because when you were talking about the Alpha Eight, you know, I I, I briefly watched a couple of episodes. I knew exactly what you were going to say, and I I mean, I share the same sentiments as as well. You know, when when you start getting into range and you know tendencies and this all this this stuff, you know, obviously I understand at this point because televised poker isn't really that popular, and the people that are watching it, I guess, you know, they've kind of demanded in a way that it be more focused on poker. But I think we're getting to the point 
you know, in the community where people are realizing like this, this isn't the best approach to take because, you know, as you said, the ma- the people that, you know, kind of the recreational players or the, the casual fans of poker that just, they, they want it. They don't, they don't want it. They don't even want to know any of that. They don't necessarily care about any of that. And, you know, one thing that you said you're trying to do with, with the show is you want to, you know, focus on personalities and, and maybe build up some people, I guess, over the course of the series. Is, is that specifically, is that one thing you've thought about doing where you're kind of have, a, a, you know, certain people on a little bit more often and you're kind of maybe trying to play them up as one of the main characters? Is that something you're thinking about? Not really. I mean, it's, it's what, where we are right now is kind of just a byproduct of the, the initial the initial shooting the initial uh, episodes that we shot we brought in what what I thought was a great lineup and some of those people had such a good time Tom Schneider wrote a, wrote me this amazing letter after we were done he wrote he wrote this letter and he basically said Todd that was the most fun I've ever had playing poker and that includes all the all the breaks with that one so he became like a super fan and so he wanted to come to all of our tapings. So he, he, I think he's been to, he hasn't been to everyone, but he's been to three out of four. And then David Baker, he again was a, a, like right away was, was really into it. So he came a lot. And then we, we sort of, you know, I guess we got a lot of the same people over and over. And that wasn't by design. It was basically by almost, you know, I was kind of paying them back. Like I appreciated the fact that they came and I appreciated the fact that they were supporters and they were, and they were talking you know, talking good, getting, talking good things about us. So it was kind of a, you know, I liked having them there. I, I appreciated their support. So that's why we got a lot of the same players uh, over and over and again. It wasn't, it wasn't by design. It wasn't anything we were just trying to build people up. Gavin Smith is another big supporter of Poker Night America. So he's been to more than one. Um, in the future, so we, here's where we are. We got about 26 episodes. In the future, I'd like to really even go off the rails even more and do some kind of spunky stuff. Like I've actually thought about trying to get the rounders cast together and doing a poker, doing a poker show. Um, maybe getting, I, if we go to Vegas, I'd like to get all the headliners to come together and play in a game. Like get it, you know, how fun would that be to get, you know, like Brad Garrett or Vinny, uh, Favorito and getting these, these guys at the poker game would be hysterical. So I'm, the, the show could really, you know, we're going to be producing this for a long time, I hope. And I think you'll see, uh, I think you'll see us, you know, change as we go. We're just going to continue to evolve. Yeah, I remember you, I heard you mention the word evolve. And I think that's kind of something I've done with my own my own things is I went into it with, you know, not a specific thing in mind, but, it, it, you know, things just evolve naturally. You see what, what people like. You see maybe what people not might not like, and you know sometimes you might choose to focus on what people like. That's not always the case when you're creating content. You know maybe you you, you think you can do something better, and you might keep sticking with something. But I think you actually by having these people back, like it, you know, like you said, it wasn't a direct like that wasn't the plan to have these people on. But I think that's that's going to be a really good thing because you know the more the people are shown on TV, the more you get to see this. This 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 you know positive side of, of the players you know, repeatedly. I think that's you know then it gives these people the, the people watching something to talk about. Like, hey, did you see the episode last night? You know, Gavin Smith was on. You know, did you see what he said? Did you see what he did? And then you know they watch another episode and then they mention Gavin Smith again. And then you know what I mean? Like, I think that that's only a good thing as provided the the people are, I guess, liked you know, for the most part. Right. Yeah. And and. You know, what we're, we're, we're trying to do is create an atmosphere of fun. And so we made the stakes not so high that it's uncomfortable. But yet, obviously, it's real money and people are, you know, there, there are, it's decent stakes. It's like a $5,000 buy-in into a cash game up to 20000 So, you know, it's, but, it, you know, just from, the, I watched the last, I watched the first two episodes. And, and the first episode is really, it's really kind of a background story on getting us there and that we're on the plane and, I think I think it's fun. I like it a lot. There's only three poker hands, but the next the next show is kind of all poker, and there's some really there's some really good hands in there. And there's a there's one where where Matt Glantz gets into it with uh, Greg Mueller in a in a hand, and Greg Mueller just tries to pull this bluff that just completely fails, and it's funny. 
Like I was laughing. It's <laughs> it's hysterical what happened. And next week, uh, we, in episode four, we're gonna see Matt the the big hand with uh with Madison, which is it's gonna be good. So I I like it. I like the show. I think most people will. But you're gonna get some people that won't because whatever people. Not everybody's gonna like everything, right? But, yeah, exactly. And yeah, I think the people there's gonna be some people. The, 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 what's the word I want to call them? Like the snobs, you know, the kind of like, these guys that are going to watch the first episode, they're going to see three hands. You know, obviously it's 30 minute, it's a 30 minute episode with commercials. So it's probably how much running time? 22, 24 minutes? 22, exactly. 22 minutes. So they're going to see three hands and they're going to say, you know, what the fuck is this? Three hands. Where, where's the, where's the poker hands? And. You know, I don't think those guys are ever going to get it, to be honest with you. I don't think they're going to get it right now at, the, at this time because I think there's going to be a lot of people who watch this and they're like, wow, this is, this is, this is fun. Like, I, I really enjoyed watching this. You know, I didn't have to think about anything. I, I got to see a couple of poker hands. I got to, you know, see some backstories and, and, and kind of see this fun that these players have outside and they're really going to enjoy it. And, you know, you, I think you mentioned the, the second episode has six. It has six hands, which is a couple more hands. Is that correct, or it was something? You know like... what? I, I think it's. I didn't even count them. I, I know the ep- the second episode, which will occur like right after the first one. There's two episodes that are going to air back to back. The second one is almost all poker, so it's like eighty five percent of the show is, is poker hands. I don't know how many there were. Um, it could be six. It could be ten. I, I don't even remember. I wasn't counting them. <clears throat> I think it'll be a good. I, I think. Having those two back to back, you know, the like I said, the people that have that immediate reaction are going to be able to see the second one, and they're going to be like, okay, you know, there is some poker involved. But I think you know those guys will realize is that, you know, I, did, did you did you do you ever uh you know in the first episode do you, do you say anything that that kind of you know I want this to be something fun. I don't want this yeah. to be something in depth. Do you mention that in the intro and everything? It's basically the first line. It's like. We basically, we, we basically describe Poker Night America as we're going to do more than just show you hands of poker. We're going to show you what, what happens off the felt. We're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to go on excursions. We're going to go have fun. We're going to bring personality back to the game. So we kind of set that all up. And I think you'll, you know, we try to set up the season with the first episode. I think you'll get it um, when you see it. So, I, I mean, I know I'm going to get it right away. And... I'm gonna do my I'm gonna do my uh, my best as far as getting helping get the word out there because I, I heard you mention that you know social media and this is gonna play a pretty important role whether it's hashtagging during an episode or you know people talking about it on Twitter and people talking about it on Facebook people sharing hands posting hands on YouTube and I guess is that you know like when you're thinking about you know attracting viewers. How big of a role do you think that's going to play in getting the word out initially over the first couple of weeks of the show? I'd say a hundred percent. Like it, it's 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 the most important thing. I mean, there's no other way to do it. I mean, there's no way. You know, in today's age, you need. You, it's not like I can run a bunch of promos. It's not like I can buy full page ads in a in a magazine or something like that. I need people to talk about it, and and that's the beautiful thing about social media and Twitter is if, if like, say, Richard Roper. I just talked to him a couple days ago. He's, a, he's, a, he's in Chicago just like you. He, he's a, critic, a film critic. You're probably aware of who he is. Um, oh, he's, very, he's huge in Chicago. He's super popular. Yeah, he's going to come. I invited him. He's a poker player, so I invited him to come and play in New York next month, and he accepted. So I, I tweeted. You know, he's got 120,000 followers. So, you know, if that if I can get more and more people like that to, to, to talk to their, their Twitter followers, I mean, obviously that's going to spread around the country. And uh, I'm kind of counting on the poker community, which is very involved in Twitter, to, you know, help the cause. I mean, because I really do believe, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be some sort of a, some sort of a, I don't know, like, a, you know, carrying some torch for everybody. But I, I really do believe that, this is important. I mean, we're trying to make this game more, you know, recognized, not recognizable for one thing. We're trying to make it fun. We're trying to get people, mainstream America involved, right? And, you know, this, this happened once before in 2003. It was, it was this, this wave that hit the country. But I think it's ready for another, another wave. 
So let's make it, you know, make it fun, make it something that any, anybody can appreciate, especially with the, the way that online poker is going to hopefully start getting legalized. We need people to, to participate. I, I hundred, hundred thousand percent agree. I mean, that's kind of what I'm, you know, my mindset as far as you know, when I think about the way I can affect things from a, you know, from an online, you know, the online PLO community or kind of the community I'm involved in, you know, I always try to think of ways I can have a direct effect on whether it's, you know, entertaining people or, you know, providing something new for people to kind of, you know, take in and, now, what your guys is doing is just like it on such a grand scale, and I, I think it. I think it's you know definitely has the ability to have a super positive effect on just bringing people back in. Like you said, you know, there hasn't really been much much fun po- on poker or fun poker on TV, and people kind of quit watching poker. I think a long time ago. I mean, you'd hear for a couple of years ago, you hear people mention, "Oh, I watch this" or "I watch this." But you don't really hear that ever. I mean, I still talk to a lot of people when I'm out. You know, if I'm talking about poker, I'm like, hey, do you watch poker? Are you interested in poker? And, you know, people like poker, but they just don't watch it on poker anymore on TV. So, like you said, I think, you know, the way legislation's kind of, you know, starting to pick up a bit more. You know, I think it's, we're at a time where something like this is, is a potential, like, kind of a huge factor in things. You know what I mean? And also, you guys are sponsored by... 888 that I, you know, how, I think I read that on your Twitter. Is that That's correct? correct. So how does that work out for you guys? What's that going to be like? Wonderful. <laughs> um, you know, they're basically, they're our title sponsor. They like the show. We're on network television. We've been talking to them for months. And um, once the CBS deal is done, we basically ink that deal right right on top of it. So they're excited too. Like I'm, I'm flying out to New York uh, this uh, tomorrow actually. I have a meeting with uh, with the 888 people in New York, and um, yeah, everybody's really pumped about it, you know. So, and I'm I'm very excited to have them on board. I mean, we need that, you know. We need somebody like them to sure. to uh, get involved and and fund this the project. So, hey, without them, we probably wouldn't wouldn't have a deal. When they yeah, when they sponsor you, I mean, so basically, it's it's them helping fund the project. Are they putting their, like is their name kind of in the credits or in an intro or something like that? Like, you know, what exactly does that mean if, if they're they're a sponsor for the, sh- the show? Well, you'll see them in the show quite often. They, you know, you'll see them on the felt. We we, we, we mentioned that, that the announcer mentions that there were, you know, 80 days, the, the title sponsor. They get billboards at the beginning and the end of the show. They get commercials in the show. Um, so, yeah, they're definitely interwoven into the whole thing. Kind of like the old uh, full tilt poker after dark sort of thing, where you know, because I, I guess that back then it was sort of a commercial in a way for full tilt. Yeah, poker. kind of what that's what. Hey, the word. Is this a similar type? No, of No, I don't think it's as extreme. You know, even eight 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 would say the same thing. We're we're trying to make this. This is a national television show. This isn't some infomercial. So it's it can't look like an infomercial. It's got to look like a real. You know, it's a TV show. So they know that, mm-hmm. and, and they know that, you know, we can't, like, overwhelm the audience with, with their brand and, and turn it into some infomercial. So that's it's certainly not to that extreme. That's, uh, I mean, I, I didn't necessarily notice it too big, you know, when I was, I always watched Poker After Dark when I was, you know, when I was big into, I guess, when I was really big into televised poker, and I didn't really never notice it as a, as a, big full tilt ad until people started pointing it out in the forums. They're like, oh, you know, this is a lot of full tilt stuff going on here. And obviously all the players were all full tilt. There were never poker stars players. And then at some point I was like, well, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So did you stay up later every night and watch it or did you tape it? Well, oh hey, man, you like you like just segued into, into a topic I, I I have written down here. So I um I definitely never watched it live. I, I always watched it on the computer. And my question actually was going to be is, you know, how important do you think it's going to be for people to watch it, DVR it on CBS Sports and or watch it on the CBS Sports website or the PokerNight.com website? Well, in this day and age, you, you have to live with the fact that people, a lot of people are going to be DVRing the show. And that's just the fact of life. And so we have to obviously also give people another option. 
So every after uh, two weeks after the original shows air, then they'll be available on PokerNight.com. So you'll be able to to watch them uh, digitally as well online. And one day after, they'll probably be available on the various poker video websites that most people usually go to online to uh, to watch TV shows. I mean, it, why 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 two weeks? Why 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 that? That's just our contract with CBS Sports. They try to. They are, you know, they want to protect themselves, and that's why there's a window mm-hmm. like that. So, so do you think it's important though that people actually tune in on on the network rather than going online to find it later? Do I think it's important? Like, is it? Yeah, do you think it's important for any? I guess. Like yeah, do you think it's important at any degree for that to happen? Um, I guess I just I just live in you know I, I understand what the reality is. The reality is I mean I know how I live myself. Like I I DVR a lot of stuff and I zap the commercials. I mean it's just it's what it is. And that's that's the well it's not necessarily DVRing. It's more just so let's say that I can go on you know like a poker tube and and watch it if someone uploads it. Okay. Or I can watch it live or watch it on DVR on the CBS Sports. It, does that is that going to have an impact on the longevity of the potential success of the show if many people are you know going online and watching it as compared to DVRing or watching live? I really don't know. Um, obviously, ratings are a factor, and CBS Sports will be looking at the monitoring the ratings and, and seeing how the show is doing. Um, so it, it is it, it is somewhat important, I think, for people to actually watch it on the network. The other thing that's interesting is. I've already had people say to me, well, I don't get CBS Sports in my current cable package, but I'm going to order it now. So that's another thing that CBS Sports is, is I'm sure, interested in, is getting more subscribers. So, you know, there's there's a lot of factors at play here. Um, but as you mentioned, I mean, people are certainly going to watch it, you know, online, and that's just the nature of the beast. For me, you know, it's kind of a, sure, I want, C- I want the ratings to be good. I mean, why wouldn't I? But... I also want eyeballs on the show. There's something I haven't mentioned. It's kind of important. Um, besides CBS Sports, we're also going to be airing the show on regional sports networks. So you live in Chicago, and it's going to be on Sunday nights mm-hmm. at 7 o'clock on Comcast Chicago. Yeah. Really? Wow. That's a, I mean, that's a station everybody gets here in Chicago. Yeah, I know. It's uh, so we're so we're able to supplement the show. So not only is it going to be on CBS, but then two weeks later there will be uh, the, the show will again start airing on on like Comcast in Chicago, Comcast Philadelphia, Comcast Baltimore, and then I have a deal with uh, Altitude Sports out of Denver, which reaches about ten states in the Mountain West, and that's just the beginning. I'm going to get the show on more and more syndicated regional sports network. So for me, it's all about eyeballs. Like how many people can we get to watch this show every week? And that's that's my goal. Well, I'll, I'll be DVRing for sure. I'll be recording it just because, you know, I'm, I'm going to want to support the show. I'm going to I'm going to ask all the people that I know, you know, just even if they're not going to watch it, at least throw the DVR on there, you know, at least throw at least record it just because you know, I think anything helps, really. I mean, you know, do you think, um, one thing I was wondering about is how important is it that for, you know, out of the country, whether it's, I guess, Canada's in a way as American, I know it's going to be aired in Canadian television as well, but how is, is it important to have any type of success from overseas viewers? Is, is, is that something that you, I guess, you Yeah, it's definitely about? part of our longer term strategy is to get the show distributed internationally as well as nationally. And there's something, you know, in the future, I don't know how soon this might happen, but, you know, just the nature of the show, the name of the show, you know, Poker Night in America could easily be Poker Night in Canada, could easily be Poker Night in Europe. And so, I like where you're, yeah, like I mean, I, you know, that's all, you know, you got to crawl, walk, run, right? So we're in the crawling stage now, but that's not to say that I'm not thinking about running, and getting the show, you know, spread all all over the world, even under different head banners, different names. I mean, I I don't get a chance. Most of the people I communicate with on a on a day to day basis are other people that you know that are kind of playing online all the time. And 
it's not very often I actually get to talk to somebody in the poker world who, you know, kind of has a mindset where they're, you know, they are thinking the way you're thinking, where it's like, all right, you know, I've got this, I've got this, all right, you know, what can I look ahead to? You know, where could this go? How, how popular could it be? You know, what steps do I have to take in the meantime to get it there? So it's just, you know, it's rather refreshing for me to be able to talk to you and just kind of ask you these questions and, you know, get your insight on these things, because I, I think poker needs more people that are, you know, willing to take a risk, I guess, kind of, you know, how you, what you've done in the past and what you're doing right now. So you know, I, I really, I guess that wasn't really a question. That was more of a statement, but. You know, I guess my, the, one of the things that I'm, I'm trying to do is, is be, I don't look at myself as a competitor to <clears throat> like the world poker tour, the world series of poker. I don't know if they think that way. Um, but I, I like to be Switzerland. Like I want to be neutral, and <clears throat> I just think I just think more poker on TV is better than less poker on TV. So, you know, for for those people that are fans of the World Poker Tour, I say, hey, that's great. You know, I'm glad the World the World Poker Tour is my inspiration. In 2003, I was watching the World Poker Tour every single Wednesday night, I and mean, it was like that was my Wednesday was watching that. And that's what inspired me to do the Heartland because the Heartland to me was a chance for regular people to play on TV. That's what the whole concept was. It's we don't all have ten grand for buy, to buy into the World Poker Tour, and at the time that's all it was. You couldn't play a World Poker Tour unless it was a ten grand event. So that's what HPT was. So the reason I'm here and doing this is because of the WSOP and because of the World Poker Tour, and I want them to to be around. In the World Series, I mean, I was out there already twice this year. I played a couple events. And who, you know, it's the, the best brand in poker. Let's, and all, all Poker Night America is, it's a, it's a weekly show to bring new fans to the game. That's, that's the goal. So when you say that, it sounds like you, you've maybe gotten some feedback that you feel like that those people do think of, they are maybe thinking yeah. of you as competition. Yep. You're you got a pretty some smart guy, like Joe. Yeah. You picked up you picked up on that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think they're real crazy about what we're doing, um, and I think that's unfortunate. I mean, it's short-sighted. Uh, I really, I mean, what, whatever. I, uh, yeah, I've gotten some feedback, and and uh, I just think it's wrong. I, we're just gonna keep keep doing what we're doing. I think it's the right way to go for everybody. It's, man, I mean. It's interesting that 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 would be the reaction. I guess I guess you know, I'm sure it's somebody who is going to listen to this, and you know, I, I would think they'd realize that. I think it only helps. I don't really see how it is competition. I'm sure. I guess I'd have to think about it a bit more from that angle, but I think it only kind of builds up. Like they watch your show, they want to watch the World Series on ESPN. I mean, I would think that would or, be like a, a, a or they watch our show, they decide to start playing. <clears throat> And the World Series Poker grows, mm -hmm. you know. They, they're they already, I mean, look what they're doing this year. This monster stack this weekend was huge. Um, so I didn't I didn't quite understand what a, what a monster stack was. I, I, obviously, I didn't really do enough. I think it was double. I think it, the way that it works out there is for a $1,500 event, you get three times that in chip stack when you start, so that's 45 I think they doubled it for the monster stack. I think I think you started with that. I think. Wow. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, I, I I saw so many tweets about it in Facebook posts. I was like, "What is this?" It was like eight thousand players. Like uh, I think total or one day. I was like, "That's yeah, it's crazy, isn't amazing. it?" Amazing. Wow. So I think I think I actually saw someone post on Two Plus Two if they thought the monster stack would hurt the main event potentially in the future if they keep it around the same date because you have the chance to still make a lot, like win a lot of money playing this, starting off with a deep stack and also playing with a lot of players, which is essentially the same thing the main event is, except it's a $8,500 difference. So I think it'll be interesting to see if they keep the same date for that event next year or if they move it to sometime earlier and separate it from the main event as the popularity for it seems to be, you know, pretty big. Is all For, uh, for the television show, are you planning on doing any... Not yet. Um, 
PLO is a great game. I love it myself. Um, but it's also a little hard to follow for the you know the casual fan, and so it's you know it's a, it's a little trickier. And then the other thing with PLO that is, that you probably never don't even think about it's the cards. Like you have to show four cards instead of two, and that's just a lot of cards to to fit in the camera to fit in that little space. So, I mean, with with RFID technology, it's not as hard, but uh, that you know that'd be fine. But but anyway, that's just one thing that you probably haven't thought of. We'll, we'll probably, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't do something like that someday in the future, but not in the immediate terms. I got uh, more pressing things to consider. Yeah, if there's ever a PL episode, Let please. you know. <laughs> All right, so, you know, the Heartland Poker Tour, as you said earlier, was created to give the kind of everyday person a chance to play in these tournaments and get a chance to be on TV. and. That was a huge success. I mean, everyone I know, I live around the Horseshoe Casino and the Majestic Star Casino, and everybody I knew locally was like, oh, you playing the Heartland Poker Tour at, you know, when it was started going on. And, you know, Mike, you're watching the WPT. So you're sitting on your couch. It's Wednesday night. You're, you're watching television on poker. How the hell do you just come to the, how do you get to the point where you just create your own poker tournament that's terrible. Like, how does that even? Yeah, that's that's amazing. How does that happen? Well, it was really a crazy move on my part, honestly. I so you got to go back to 2005 or 2004. What I was doing at the time, I was uh, I've been in sales my whole life. Like I started in radio sales and I moved into TV sales and then I I became like a sales manager and then became like a general manager for a TV station. So mm-hmm. at, at the time, I was. You know, I had a good job. I, I was running a television sales staff, and my boss, you know, I actually over, I'd worked for him for many years, and I was just kind of sick of it, and I was sick of the fact that I wasn't, you know, putting more money in my pocket because I was making them a lot of money. So I was looking for something to do different, and I started playing, I was playing poker a little bit, and I was playing this, this weekly game at a casino about 70 miles from my house, and I was I was kind of uh, commuting with another guy from town that I knew. And we were just chatting one night. And he's a local businessman. Anyway, he's like, we were talking about the World Poker Tour. And we were talking about we coming back after a tournament. And he, I was like, man, wouldn't it be fun to be on TV? How cool would that be to play on the World Poker Tour? And he's like, yeah, but who's got that kind of money, you know, to go blow? And that's when one of us said, yeah, they should have, they should have a tour for, you know, regular people like Weekend Warriors, and that's how it started. That was basically the genesis of it. And this guy, his name is Greg Wang, he and I started talking about it, and a few months later, you know, we decided to put together a little business plan, which we did, and then I actually went to my boss and I said, I have this idea to create this show. And he at first wanted to be my partner, and then he, then he decided that that wasn't going to work. So he basically said, you choose. Either stay here or you or you leave, and I I walked out the door. That was February first, two thousand five. Wow! And uh, Heartland Poker Tour was officially born. And guess I got disconnected here. This Google Plus just randomly kind of froze on me while you were in the middle of talking. You were mentioning that I think where you were at. You said Heartland Poker Tour. You said. Can't well, I was yeah. I was telling a story about how we started that that show. I don't know the last thing you heard. So you said you you mentioned. Let's. I think the, the the last part I heard was you were talking to the guy who was gonna go in with you, and then he said you either have to leave right. or you yeah, can... that was my boss. Right, and I ended up walking out the door uh, on February first, two thousand five, and started Hardline Poker Tour with almost nothing, and um, it we somehow we miraculously survived, and it was really stupid really when you think about it in retrospect we didn't have enough money we didn't have any business doing what we were doing we didn't know what we were doing and i don't know how we made it really i mean i think somehow we figured it out i love it i think it was the content was good the 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 idea was great people loved the idea you know you had a ton of support it seemed like everywhere you everywhere you guys set up tournaments the turnouts were pretty great. And well, it didn't, it didn't start that way. Like, was that uh, not how it went right away? I guess, obviously, I'm, no. 
I'm looking down no. the road there. So, you know, what was it like starting off? You know, how was, was, it was there? The first event, okay, so let me tell you a quick story. So the very first event was going to be held in northern Minnesota. And the casino wanted to have a guaranteed prize pool. So they put out a $100,000 guaranteed prize pool. Even though I basically told them not to. I said, you know, we're just starting. Who knows how many people we're going to get. So we set the buy-in at $500. And we needed 200 players then, right? To get to, to hit our guarantee hundred thousand dollar price pool. So anyway, we didn't. Ma- so we were the the casino like the, the two weeks before the event was supposed to happen. The casino called me up and said we're not going to do it. We're going to cancel. And by that time, I already had two events scheduled. And I basically said you can't. And he's like, yeah, we're going to cancel. I said, if you cancel, you're going to kill my company that just started. And he goes, I don't really care, but I'm not going to lose any money on this deal. So I drove up there. And he refused to change his mind. So then I had to guarantee $100,000. That's what I did. What? Yeah. So I, I told him, I said, would you do the event if I guaranteed the 100000 And he said, yeah, he would. So he brought in his attorney and we signed, I signed it. I called my partner as I left. And I said, hey, I got, I got good news and bad news. And when I told him what I had done, he freaked out. He's like, what? And I said, hey, man, it was like life or death. We, we had to either do this event or we're just going to, to be done before we start. So <clears throat> we don't, we didn't have a hundred thousand dollars, by the way. We, we, uh, it was crazy. It was crazy. We ended up short too. We ended up short by about, I think the price pool got to like 94,000 or something like that. So, so this was pre Twitter, pre Facebook, kind of pre Facebook, right? What's that? This was before Twitter and Facebook for the most part, wasn't it? 2005. Yeah, there was no Twitter. Um, there, I was certainly, you know, we certainly weren't on Facebook or using Facebook either. So, so how, how like, do you have any like last minute strategies you employed to kind of get the word out that there was this overlay and this is a great value for people to come check out? Or well, we were doing do? traditional media, like we were buying television. We weren't the casino was, so there was a lot of marketing out there. And people were excited to play. But I'll never forget, that was just the craziest thing. We were at this casino. We had to rent this truck to shoot the show. So we had to rent this truck, and it was like $6,000 a day. And we had, to, we had to do some practicing. So we'd never done it before. So we, you know, and then think about the hole cards. You, people don't really understand how hard it is to shoot a, a poker show. Because you have to capture, we had, we, we, didn't get, like, we had six separate DVRs running. I wish we were using video. I can't remember. It was bad. It was bad. Like that first show was so bad. And it was just a nightmare that we were short, you know, and we had to, you know, this, this is the other part of that story. We actually brought our own money to, to buy in people if we had to, because if you're going to be short, you might as well get some horses in the race. So that's a great point. This is, this really happened. Okay. So, I'm playing poker. We each brought we brought about ten thousand dollars that we were going to just buy people in. So the night before the main event, I was playing with this kid in the it was a five sixty spread game. That's the biggest game they had. Anyway, after after playing with him about three hours, I said, "You're pretty good." I said, "You're going to play tomorrow?" He goes, "No, I don't have five hundred bucks to play." And I said, I pulled him aside. I said, "What, what if I bought you in?" And he goes, you do that? I said, yeah, you give me 60% of what you win, and you're in. So the kid took second. <laughs> oh. And it was, it was terrible because I was at the final table commentating, and I was thinking, oh, my God, if anybody knew that I had a piece of this kid, you know, it would be, it'd be, it'd be curtains for us, you know. So <laughs> I swore I'd wow. never do that again. I, that was the first and only and last time I ever took a piece of somebody in one of our events. Because I was going, I was like, please don't win. Please don't win. I didn't want him to win. Wow, that is people crazy. would say, oh, you knew the whole cards. You were, give, you were tipping him off. You know? Yeah. Which so, obviously yeah. you weren't doing. So. No, of course not. So, uh, so yeah, that was, the, the, that was the, the bizarre beginning to Heartland Poker Tour. This is how companies at, start. This is how things. This is what happens. You got to. You got to run good at the beginning. I mean, you need some things to fall your way. You need a little bit of luck. You need a lot of hard work. And that's it, 
I couldn't have said it better myself. That that's exactly what it was. It was we we worked our asses off. We caught a few breaks. We somehow figured it out. I mean, the the the, the saving grace was at the time. I started working on a deal with Poker Stars, and I really thought I had a deal with Poker Stars. And then they backed out, and then I ended up getting a deal with Action Poker, which was a, a company out of Vancouver. And if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have made it. That was that saved us a sponsorship. Action Poker, I've never heard of. Uh, yeah, they... Action Poker. They were one of the very first poker sites. I mean, I think they came along after Planet Poker. Uh, so they might have been the number two. Wow. And they were owned by a guy up in Vancouver, Canada, named Jay Kalpakian. And <clears throat> that was our sponsor in season one of Heartland Poker Tour. So you make it through the first season. Is there an automatic second season already planned in the works? I mean, obviously, at this point, you have some experience under your belt. You kind of know what's going on, know what to expect. You know, was the second season like, all right, let's let's do this, let's make it better. You know, what was kind of the mindset going into that season? Are you talking about Heartland still? Yeah, Heartland. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, that. Oh boy. Uh, at that time, we were just trying to figure out how to make money, and that's that's something that you know is the most challenging part ever. And you know, I'm proud to say that I, I think Heartland might be the only poker tour that ever made money because. Uh, you know, I don't think the World Poker Tour has ever made any money. And so we, we were able to do it. And we, what we did was we kept our costs low and we kept the, uh, the production part. As, we did it about as cheaply as you could possibly do it. And, and then we started charging for the events. We started charging casinos to, uh, to, to host events. And Majestic Star became one of our biggest clients Oh yeah, uh, in was... Chicago. Yeah, that was... I think, I've, I've been there many times, many times. I was at the Majestic Star Casino. Well, I don't think the Majestic Star Casino is a place that most people I know around this area, whatever, would go to still. But back then, before the horseshoe was around, it was very popular, and it was the go-to casino in town. But at this yep. Point, at this yep. point, the popularity has faded. Yeah, well, they, they've had a, and then there's a new room opened across the, the harbor there with the, Ameris, the old Ameristar. Or is it, is it still called Ameristar? Yeah. The resorts. It used to be called resorts. Resorts, yeah. I'm not sure if they have a poker room. I, and then the horseshoe dominates this region for the most part. But right. I think the, the horseshoes get a reputation as like all the, all the miserable regulars, grinders go there with their headphones. So I think people like, kind of like going to the Majestic sometimes still because, you know, there's not many like professionals there that are make, trying to make a living playing in those games. So it's, still has some fun element to it, and the wait lists aren't too long, and you can kind of just hop in a game right away. So You know, that place was used to be called the Trump. <clears throat> that was the Trump Casino. And the first the time... The Majestic I'll... Star used to be the Trump? Yeah, it was the Trump Casino. Wow. How long ago was that? I was probably... I mean, I've been 20, I'm 29 now. That must have been before I was 21 then. Well, the first time I went there, it was Trump, and I went there to, I was with Heart, I was Heartland, I was at, it was probably 2005, because I was running around the country trying to get casinos to do our events, so I went to the Trump, <laughs> and I had this, you know, I had this kind of impression from the brand Trump that I thought this place would be really nice, and it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't at all, <laughs> I mean, uh, I just couldn't believe it. Like, I, I was in this hotel, I and mean, I got this room, and I'm like, what? This is a Trump property? This place is this place is a dive. And then I had to walk to the casino. Have you ever done that? Have you ever walked from the hotel to the casino? Well, when I was, a, uh, when I was 21, I was, de- I was not a winning poker player. I was a degenerate. And when I had a winning night, I would stay in the hotel at the Majestic, and I would take that long walk over to the casino. So I've done that more than a couple times in my life, and... What what did you think about the walk? Well, again, so go. I get. I go all the way back to 2005. I drive up to the hotel. I get a room. I have an appointment with the the, the poker room manager. And the, it, there's a sign that says, to, you know, casino. It says to the casino. So you know, obviously, I just think it's right around the corner. You know, so I go through the door and I'm going through this 
this you go up, you go down, you go up again, you go down again. You got these big fans blowing, and I was like, you got to be kidding me. This is, it, it, what, what would it be, like a half a mile? I mean, it took like, it took 15 minutes to walk, right? It took 50, at least 15 minutes to walk it, right? Probably like 20 minutes to the poker room. I mean, because once you get to the casino, it's still like a journey to get to go through the, you got to go past the wing stop, you got to go up a couple more flights of stairs once you get past security, so it's it's like a 20, 25 minute trek hotel room to the poker room, which is, well, I mean, I'm not sure if it's like that in most places, but. No, it's not like that. No. <laughs> I can walk a mile on a treadmill and just at a brisk pace, I can walk a mile in, in like, what, 12 minutes? So how far was that casino from the hotel? It's a long ways. Many a night I had to make that walk, so. Anyway, it was good times. I mean, Majestic was a uh, was a great partner for us at Heartland, and and a uh, huge part of our business. I mean, I remember doing a huge prize pool. There. We had like a eight hundred fifty thousand dollars prize pool for a wow. was it a fifteen hundred dollars buy in? I mean, Dan Zogman, that's who won two hundred thirty thousand. And how many thousand dollar events produce a prize pool like that? I mean, definitely not. Only the World Series events. I mean, for the most part, is there is there is the is the Heartland still going on now? I know you sold it at some point in time, so you weren't involved with it. Is it still going on now? Yeah, it is. Yep. Is the is the success at the point where it once was? Well, it depends on how you measure success. Right. But I probably shouldn't talk about it. Yeah, let's kind of a sore subject. The people that anyway, it's just uh. It's not my deal anymore, so I moved on. Is it is it something you you kind of wish it was your deal, or is are you is it something that you're you don't necessarily think about too often anymore? I don't think about it too much anymore. I mean, it was my baby, yeah. and I created it. But um, it's I mean, we had a I, I think our formula was was pretty good. I don't I don't know if they have the same formula today, but um, yeah. yeah, we're you know I'm off to do to do something bigger. I think better. I think also, you know, I think you having that success with Heartland Poker Tour is something that opens up this door for you to get something potentially with a CBS Sports with an 888 poker sponsor. I mean, you know, do you think the track record that you've had is something that matters? There's no, du- there's no doubt. I mean, um, there's no doubt at all. I mean, the, the track record helped me get this deal with Rush Street. Help me get the deal with CBS. Help me get the deal with 888. So it's uh, it was you know it's been uh, it's been an interesting ten years doing this stuff. It's been a lot any, of fun. Any plans to have any plans to write any potential book at some point in time? I I I don't think you blog at all. So I mean, you know, is it kind of something you take it in the memories to the you know yeah the future with you and maybe write about it one day kind of yeah thing? I will. I've, in fact, I already wrote the first chapter. I mean, I got stories like you wouldn't believe. I mean, just that that first that story I told you about the first event where we had to guarantee the money ourselves. And that story's awesome. <laughs> I got a, I got a hundred of those stories. It's just it's been a it's been a quite a ride. I feel like we could have done a three hour podcast about the Heartland Poker Tour alone. Like, I mean, could have could have walked through the the beginning to the all kind of fun things about that alone. But <laughs> just well, I mean, it's an interesting topic. You know, it's it's. Yeah, it's, it is a good story. You know, we, we flew under the radar for a long time. Like we, nobody really paid much attention to us. We were just doing these events in the Midwest, and then we branched out. We ended up going to New York and started doing events in California. We did an event, and yeah, we, we you know we were definitely under the radar for a long, long time. And then all of a sudden, people started paying attention. And like, who are these guys? Like, they've been around for a while now. <laughs> And, you know, at, at our peak, we were doing, you know, we were making some pretty decent money. And I think people started taking notice. And, you know, that's what, ironically, it was probably the worst thing that could have happened to us. We were always like, why don't they pay attention to us? How come we don't do, they don't do stories on us? How come they don't list us in card player? Um, and we kind of took offense to it, you know. We were kind of the, the podunk tour, you know. And kind of 
probably motivating for you. And you're like, well, you know, if these guys aren't going to notice me, we're going to make them take notice of I get us. The, the ironic thing is probably the worst thing that could ever happen because then, because then, like, okay, little pat on the back here. We were doing hour long shows in two parts from day one. The World Poker Tour started doing that. They copied us. They were because who was able to clear a two hour block? On TV, I mean, yeah, they got that deal once with the Travel Channel, but that's pretty impossible. And we knew that from the first, from day one. We knew that an hour-long show is easier to clear than a two-hour show. So we knew that there was enough footage on a final table to produce two hours of TV, but you just couldn't produce it. You had to produce it in blocks. So the World Poker Tour ended up starting to do the same thing. They they copied us later. Um. And then you get all these other poor poker tours that start running around, like the Deep Stacks Tour, you got the Card Player Tour, you got the uh, the Windy City Tour. Um, so, you know, people start thinking, oh, I can make money at this. It's easy. So, you end up, so we end up creating a lot of competitors. I think that's probably what happens when you success breeds imitation for the most part. And, you know, especially, as you said, that you're making money from it. So you probably see these people that maybe aren't necessarily interested in poker, the game. They're more interested, like, all right, you know, this is a formula that these guys seem to be doing. Maybe I can replicate this on a smaller scale. And I mean, to your knowledge, did any of those you know, things that kind of came after you, did they have any degree of success in terms of making money? I mean, I, you might not actually know that, but well, I feel like the word would kind of spread around as far as that angle. There's, there's one group that... I'll mention it's called the mid States poker tour and the guy's name. I can't, it's it escapes me right now. It doesn't really matter. Brian Molesky. Brian was a, was a frequent a heartland poker tour player in the early days. So when we started in 2005, I think we did like six events in the first year and six of them or five or six of them, five out of six were in Minnesota. And then the next year, was the same thing. We might have done 12 or 15 events, and almost all of them were in Minnesota. So we had this pretty, you know, pretty well-established group of players in Minnesota that followed our tour. They played, you know, we'd go up to northern Minnesota, we'd go to Shooting Star in Detroit Lakes, we'd go to Hinkley, we'd go to Grand Casino in Mille Lacs, we'd go down south, and they followed our tour, and Brian was one of those players. So then... We started branching out. We started going. To, we went to Iowa. Then we went to. We ended up going to Colorado. Started a big. You know, we started doing huge events in Colorado. Started going to, to Chicago. And back in those days, I mean, a lot of these players would follow us. They'd go to Chicago if we were in Chicago, at Majestic Star. So what happened was, Brian started a a magazine called Minnesota Poker Magazine, and we started doing more and more events away from Minnesota. So by his own admission, he copied our tour. He, he went to our website and copied and pasted the structures, the everything. And he started a poor poker tour called the Minnesota Poker Tour. And he started going to all the same places we used to go. And it wasn't televised. It was just a tour. So he kind of filled this vacuum that we left. And then he started expanding and getting into, like, Iowa. He started really going after our clients. So today, the, the Mid-States Poker Tour is actually pretty successful. Um, he copied our formula. He'll be the first to admit it. I've talked to him about it. And he's done a good job. Like, he's a hard worker. And he kept his costs low. And he's, to this day, he's, he's got quite a fan base right now. Like, he just did an event in, in the Venetian in Las Vegas. Look it up. He had to change his name from Minnesota Poker Tour to MS Mid-States Poker Tour. And to this day, he'll go to Iowa, which is where we did, we did about 10 events when I was with Heartland. And he goes, he goes to, he does a couple events in Minnesota. He goes to Wisconsin. He goes to Chicago. He goes to Colorado. And he's been very successful. Um, so when, when it comes to that, you know, success, as you said, success is a matter of perspective a lot of times so from something like that i guess success would be how popular and how popular the turnout is and also you know when you look at how to make money from something like that is the way you make money from 
the the casinos paying you to host that yes. tournament? Is that how that works? That's exactly how it works. So, it, you know, I, I, can you talk any a little bit about how, you know how that exactly works? I mean, is it, you they throw a number at you, you counter with a number. You, you know, how does that? You tell them how many players you might get and how much you can expect to well, rake from the kind of thing and something like that. Every deal is different. Every deal is every deal is slightly different. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was with Heartline Poker Tour, I, I would have a, a rate like a we it was just a we, we call a site fee. And I would just say, okay, you pay the site fee, and well, that includes everything. That includes that includes the event. That includes the marketing. We'll shoot the show. We'll edit the show. We'll distribute the show, all for one rate. And the casinos uh, were happy because you bring in a bunch of people, and they spend money throughout the casino, and they spend you know we create like this circus, and people would follow us around, and they'd come in and they'd play, and they'd stay for like three, four days, and then they'd go home. Um, the other way the deal works is oftentimes with the commission structure. So if they don't want to pay the flat rate, the casino will pay you based on performance. So you get, you might get the rake. You might get the entry fees. And that's, that's what we started doing. That was pretty much us. We pioneered that. And today, that's what almost everybody does. So the Mid-States Poker Tour has... They they charge a commission like they might take ten bucks ahead or whatever it is. Um, he's also got a flat rate that was a lot less than what we used to charge because he doesn't have to produce a TV show. He's just basically bringing the the marketing and the structure. Mm-hmm. And in his case, he's got a he's got a devoted following because when we left Minnesota to do events, we were just trying to grow. You know, it's just kind of a natural process. He basically kind of took that. There was a lot of people resentment of towards H, towards Heartland because it's like we abandoned them. <laughs> so he kind of built, he kind of built on that resentment and created this, this smaller tour that's become actually quite large. Um, he's in the same formula, except no television. I mean, so that was like a great idea. Kind of, when you, when you look at it from an outside perspective, it, it kind of sounds like, you know, he, he did a good thing in a way, you know, he provided this tournament series for people that, you know, we're used to something existing, and Sherry might have copied a bunch of ideas, but I guess he's making some money from it now, so, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know what, I, I used to be a little more angry about it than I am today. I mean, I used to, it used to really, you know, piss me off, because he'd come right after our clients, and he'd say, and, you know, but anyway, t- today, I actually know him, you know, it's funny, I made I made a final table this year at the World Series. Congratulations, what, and what event? They, it was the Six Packs. The six max no limit, fifteen hundred. Yeah, Whoa. I actually it, when I say final table, we got down to I finished ninth. So there were like two tables of five going. At the, so at the end, of the, but the point of the story is the I know the guys at Mid States Poker Tour, and they asked me to wear a patch, and so I've kind of really come full circle from hating them and being mad at them to the point now where it's like, okay, you know, I respect what he did. Yeah, he copied everything we did, but he did he did accomplish it, and he, he he's a hard worker, so I give him credit for it. Um, and he's kind of built, he's had some really good success. I mean, that thing at Venetian was impressive. I mean, he, had, he had like 800 players. So I give him credit um, for that, and I'm past it. Like I'm, But I did kind of joke with him the other day. I said, so are you going to start like Poker Night in Minnesota now? Are you are you gonna like copy I my mean, new idea? Maybe if it's if it works out well, as you said, poker night in Canada, poker night in in Serbia, poker night I own in all Minnesota. Those domain names. <laughs> you own them all. I'm, yeah, I think you said you 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 bought pokernight dot com two years ago. How did you buy that? Did you just look it up and contact the person? Is that how it works? Well, um, that's another story. Um, well, let's tell you what. Are, are you interested in in coming back in maybe a couple weeks? Maybe we can do a do a, a follow up thing. Maybe gauge some response so far. You can we talk about a little bit of feedback you might have got on your end and kind of stuff I'm been talking to people about yeah. and stuff like that. You interested in doing something like that? Yeah, let's get the show off the ground and see what people say about it, and then we can yeah, talk again. Cool. I mean, I'm ex- I think you know. I think this first. I think this went extremely well. I mean, I think people are gonna really enjoy getting to you know hear you talk because you're a super. Your ideas are great, you know what I mean, and it's just—it's not very often you get to hear somebody 
that I would consider pretty innovative get to hear more from them. So, you know, I think uh, I think people are really going to enjoy this episode. I hope so. Yeah, I feel like, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, you, like, as you've said, you've got all kinds of stories from, your, you've, you've seen things from a very unique perspective when it comes to, you know, the poker world, so. You, uh, well, I appreciate your time, and uh, I'll, I'll look forward to doing it again with you, okay? 